Rock, time to rock. I believe we are live. I don't know if everyone's been paying attention. I have not done this in a while. So we're going to have to see how this goes. By the way, we're at a hotel in Tel Aviv. Um, I did a speed test. We're kind of right on the border of what's acceptable for a live stream. So we'll go ahead and try it. If, uh, if things start cutting out for some reason, then... Uh, all right, guys, we uh, we just started and it already cut out. So we don't know if this will be possible. Um, we'll go ahead and try it. Uh, but again, the Internet was just on the borderline of what was acceptable. So if it's at, if it's fluctuating, if it's going down and then up, then it, it's probably going to keep cutting out. So we'll probably just chat for a few uh, if it starts cutting out. Uh, if it uh, if it does well, then we'll go ahead and, and stay on for a little while. But uh, I'm hoping this works because uh, Bobby and I are here with. Yeah, go ahead and try to see if you can get a. Can you type and let them know or anything? Um, all right, Marie's going to try and get on a, get on a, a different internet setup on her laptop. <laughs> Again, this, this is only lasting like 20 or 30 seconds. So worst case scenario, we'll just say hi to everyone, uh, chat for a few minutes. It'll cut out a few times, but there are worse. Uh, yeah, so guys, this, this just isn't working. Um, we have, uh, <laughs> Sneakers Corner said the Arabs are blocking the feet. No, we just have a lousy internet connection. Was hoping it would work. Um, it's not. So, uh, basically we'll, we'll probably cut off in a couple minutes when this, uh, when this cuts off and then I'll try, see if there's a way I can. We tried, ladies and gentlemen. We tried. Someone said, uh, uh, Bobby Conway looks like he's totally over this. Well, I'm, I'm totally over this, too. No, I'm David, totally over this, too. I, I'm here, bro. <laughs> David needs a hug. David needs a hug, right? <laughs> yeah, we tried. It just, it just sucks. Tell us speed. We are in one of the most advanced cities in the world, Tel Aviv, and it's cutting out every couple seconds. Um, tighten up, Tel Aviv, especially this hotel. Um, all right. Now, the uh, the paper we got when we got here said that there is an actual internet upgrade, but it didn't pop up. It says it will pop up as an option. It didn't pop up. All right. So, guys, we're just going to talk for a couple minutes. Just tell everyone what's going on. Uh, but we're not obviously not going to do a long live stream with it. The internet cutting out. Uh, so, so Bobby, why don't you tell us? Um, how, I, I couldn't even get that in. Uh, uh, Bob, <laughs> Bobby said. Bobby said, welcome to the one second apologist, and it cut out. I hope you guys caught that. Okay, yeah. Um, well, we're having a good time. Um, we have a need for speed in Tel Aviv. Yeah. You know, we're having a tough time here, but uh, yes, this has been a great trip. We're with the Israel Collective. Uh, we're with a group of apologists. Uh, several of us are over here just uh, scouting out the land, connecting, uh, learning about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, and it's just been a good time for us. I've been giving uh, your man David here at Act 17 a hard time, um, really trying to provide pastoral support for him. He missed his calling. He should have been a counselor. Um, a lot of empathy just flowing from him, a lot of tears. So I've just been here just trying to help him through this, you know, just loving on him and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm a sweet dude. You are a sweet dude. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so before this cuts out, I'm actually looking. It won't let me change the uh, the rate. Someone suggested in the in the chat changing the uh, rate. Um, so next time it cuts out, I'm going to try to change it, and that might actually because right now I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's high resolution. Setting it to a lower resolution might actually uh, help. Uh, yeah, guys, um, <laughs> people mentioning Sam Sam Shimon. Uh, what did he say? Um, Sam Shimon is asking not to go and watch Hater David Wood. Yeah, I went over to his channel and I said, for everyone who doesn't want to uh, be bored to death, then come over, uh, leave him and come over and, and watch us. But uh, Sam must be loving this. Yes. <laughs> Sam must be loving it that our internet's cutting out. Um, all right, it was a. <laughs> people are saying it's working now. We know it's working. It's working in like 20 to 30 second increments. Uh, but my wife called the desk and asked if there is the upgrade that the, the, the paper they gave us scissor is. And they said, no, we're already on the fastest. So there's just a problem with the Internet here. It's not good enough for live streams. Uh, again, the next time it cuts. 
All right, that was the last chance. I changed the resolution to lower. So, if this doesn't work, there's just no way around it. Uh, but again, if you don't know this guy, this is Bobby Conway. He's called the One Minute Apologist, even though his videos are almost always longer than one minute. It's false advertising to suck people in. They think they're going to get a one minute answer and then they get a uh, 10 or 12 minute answer. Why do you call yourself the one minute apologist if all your videos are like an, an hour? No, they're not. They're not an hour long. They're generally short. They're like three, four, five, six minutes. But, but explain that and you've got about 20 seconds before the internet cuts out. Uh, well, uh, the reason we go with one minute apologists is we just thought of a way to just provide opportunities to give credible answers to curious questions in a quick format and then sometimes we just get a little bit stuck you know it takes a little longer than a minute uh, but we really do aspire to one minute I think we're gonna put a timer up and start going with the 60 second deal you know but false advertising I mean act 17 apologetics I mean look at some of the stuff you're doing I mean what what do you do with that I mean that's false advertising right bro I mean no you're not feeling that? <laughs> uh, the Apostle Paul going to the, the capital of the intellect, yeah, yeah, okay. intellectual world and defending the gospel. What's D. Wood doing? Going to the capital of the internet, YouTube, no. defending the gospel. We, Come on, man. We love D. Wood. Uh, you know, you've been out there on the Temple Mount causing trouble. Uh, you know, uh, what have you been doing, man? You, 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 uh, you make us nervous out here in the Holy Land walking around with you with your, with your camera, with your webcam attached to it. Got some good footage, though. Yeah, you did get some good footage. Louise said, called you three-minute apologist. That, and that, Louise is right. It turns out to be that way. But we're going to try to get it down to a minute, no doubt. But some of the people I have on are a little, uh, you know, voluble. What? Voluminous in words. <laughs> Don't be making up words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so guys, we're, uh, we're out here in Israel and... American Concrete here says, does Israel allow free speech? If not, what can't one say? Um, I don't know the specific laws, but as far as I know, uh, as far as I know, no, no one's stopping us from from saying anything. Um, but, yeah, you'd have to ask if there are any specific restrictions on free speech. Um, if, if anyone in the description box, I mean, if anyone in the comments is uh, uh, familiar with the laws, um, yeah, I'm not aware of any restrictions on free speech here. So, um Bobby. Yes. What's been coolest while you're out here? Well, I think, honestly, just hanging out with the group. I mean, it's a special group of people. We're out here with a lot, a lot of apologists with national platforms, uh, being able to network together, thinking together about how we can leverage uh, what we do to impact this world of apologetics. It's been great uh, walking in the land uh, where Jesus lived, died, and rose again. Uh, some of the eating that we've done, they, they serve a lot of bread, don't they? I mean, are you feeling a little overload on the bread? Uh, yeah, and I mean, I love hummus, but hummus with every meal is, uh, yeah. I mean, there, there's kind of nothing I would like with, like, every meal, you know what I mean? But, like, I mean, yeah. breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there's, there's hummus there. Yeah, and, and, and the breakfast is a little different, right? I mean, like, very, I very I different. I don't, like, wake up and think, I want some lettuce. Yeah, Do you or, <laughs> or fish and olives. Yeah, I would with think, fish and olives. I would love fish and olives for like lunch, but there's just something about like you got to be in the mood for for lettuce, and uh, the morning time just doesn't seem to be apropos for it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that that's kind of what I'm thinking. I I, I love their yogurts, but the yogurts ha, have been a little bit too watery. The gelato has been nicely congealed, so I've digged the the gelato experience. He's gotten uh, gelato every single like gelato place we've gone by. Yes, yes, um, I've had a lot of gelato. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you. Well, Martin asks, "What's been your favorite meal? You remember?" Um, wow, I mean, we have really um, eaten good, and uh, I don't know which one has been my favorite meal. Do you know? Um, no, they they they've all been they've all been awesome. Have you been like working the falafel balls? Uh, all right, it went out again, but it was le at least it was after like a couple minutes, so yeah. maybe the uh, lower resolution is uh, helping. Again, we're not going to go too long. It's it's a little too frustrating with the internet cutting out left and right. But um, uh, we went to a Druze village. A Dru the Druze are so they were sort of a heretical offshoot. 
of Islam. I think they divided from Islam about a thousand years ago, and they believe in things like reincarnation. Um, they trace, they supposedly trace their beliefs back to Jethro. That's Maha, uh, that's uh, Moses's father-in-law, and they believe that he was uh, a prophet who uh, believed in 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 their religion. But I've heard that they make the best falafel, and that was correct. That was correct. You can't beat their falafel. They delivered, right? I, I am ruined on falafel. Everywhere else I go now, it's just it's just not up to uh, not up to par. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, guys, uh, a lot of the a lot of the names of stuff, uh, I just don't know. They've been handing, uh, piling food in front of us and giving us ten different things uh, at different meals, and I just don't know all the names. But I'm a I'm a simple guy, so I like you know shawarma and uh, kebabs and stuff like that. So yeah, the shawarma is good, isn't it? It's good. It's good stuff. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> let's see. Isaac said, uh, "Druze are basically Muslims plus Jews plus Christians. Um, yeah, they're, again, they're even more than that with with beliefs like uh, reincarnation and all kinds of things. Um, and uh, they don't uh, 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 proselytizing has been banned by uh, uh, some Druze leader a uh, long time ago. So you kind of only become a Druze by being born uh, into that community. Yep. So interesting stuff." Um, <laughs> Tippy Bear says, "Thank you for having Bobby Conway. Would love to see you too, minus the buffering." Yeah, once we get once we get back to the U.S., we'll have to do a live stream. Um, I can yes. have you. I can have you on by Skype, and then it does it does help that you are the one minute apologist and are used to saying things in a concise fashion, since our time is limited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, you actually you're planning on upping your game in the very near future. Is that? Is that not correct on well, YouTube? Because you've been giving me such a hard time, David. Uh, you you've definitely let me know that uh, that you kind of corner the market in the apologetics YouTube world. What, what right? did I say earlier today? I turned to you and I go, "You know, why no one likes you." Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't been on Act Seventeen yet, dude. No, you've got you know? it. He's got a big channel. He's got fifty uh, over fifty thousand. So that's on the that's on the high end of Christian apologetics channels, um, but. You're about to finish up a big time destroyer yeah, that is sure. your doctoral dissertation. And so let me get this straight. After getting a, a doctorate, you're planning on doing a ton more stuff on YouTube? Well, I resigned over a year ago as a lead pastor. So, I mean, I have my hands in a lot of different places. Uh, writing books, um, doing a woman and apologist, speaking, and, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. PhD work. Uh, in philosophy of religion, moral philosophy, and the moral argument from guilt that I've developed. And yes, it's definitely vexed me. And so I'm so stoked to be wrapping that up. And, uh, you know, the woman that apologists, one of these ministries uh, that has grown the way it has, but with not a ton of attention. And so uh, my teammate, uh, our chief executive uh, producer, Tim Hull has uh, been brought on, and we're planning to really put a lot of focus there. You've been great, by the way, and I thank you for your coaching. You know a ton about this stuff. So, um, you know, to uh, your audience, I just say, you know, I look to David as somebody that I have lots to learn from and how to make the channel better, um, for sure, because I really want to figure this out, um, <clears throat> do more social media, uh, connecting with you guys, um, you know, you just get busy sometimes and forget how important it is to stay active. I think you do a real good job of staying active. I watch you walk around with your camera and, and doing all that. So absolutely. We've got a podcast as well. I put out a weekly blog and uh, I've been doing quite a bit of radio lately where it's a call-in program for like two hours and they just ask any question about the Bible, philosophy, theology, world religion. So you try to answer it and you just say, I don't know a lot because that's got to be a part of honest apologetics. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, do you say I don't know, David? You do? Yeah. I'm proud of you for that, dude. That's how I roll. That's how you roll, yes. Because David is a very sharp dude, right? Uh -huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, well, uh, uh, it, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool that uh, that you want to uh, focus a lot of effort on on YouTube because uh, yeah, most most Christian apologetics ministries, I don't think, have caught on yet to the age yeah. that we're in. Right. Exactly. Um, of course, of course, you still need people 
uh, going around college campuses, going around right. the churches, speaking and stuff. Yeah. Um, but given the the recent shift in technology, there need to be a lot of Christians taking advantage of this opportunity that we have right now. And uh, what what I, what I think would be ideal for um, for the sort of main uh, apologetics ministries that have been around for years and sort of have a way of, of doing things yeah. is to still you know keep their sort of speaking squad, yeah, uh, their speaking team, but then get a guy or two guys or you know girls whoever um, who have the right personality to uh, do well on YouTube and yeah. say okay you're the you're the you're the internet wing of this. You're the you're the, you're the YouTube wing of this, and uh, and then so and so you you just you can't miss out on on reaching millions of people around the world from you know from wherever you are. Uh, you can just yeah. There, there's some, there's something cool and awesome about actually traveling to a page, you know traveling to a church, traveling to a college campus, and sitting down with people and having that interpersonal communication. So that is really awesome. But in, in terms of just volume, I mean, how, how much information you can get out, there's 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 just no competition for, yeah. for doing it on the Internet. Well, maybe even like just share with them. I know we've been doing some brainstorming about <coughs> getting together with some other people with uh, YouTube channels that are large and uh, doing some brainstorming. You have some um, really great ideas about, you know, some of those things. Would that be worth sharing here at all? About what we're thinking about doing and, and getting together for some time Oops. to figure this out. No, or, that's secret. Oh, it's top secret. Okay, that's extra top okay. secret. Well, there's he's just good. wording it out. No, no, no. Well, there's good stuff to go. I yeah. threw the ball into your court, so you know you're shutting that down. But no problem. What, what I told, what I've told them in my videos is, we're building an empire. Okay, right? I said, <laughs> so we're building an online <laughs> apologetics empire. I was dead serious about that. And so yeah. we got stuff going on behind the scenes that I mainly don't want to talk about it because I don't want other people copying what we're doing. You know I think I mean? that's a good point. Yeah. yeah, because we don't we don't we don't want that kind of a ripping off effect, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, now to be clear, I'm not talking about Christians. I'm not talking about Christians here. I want Christians we our basic plan is we're going to develop some. Uh, we're going to build an empire and then try to help all you know all other you know Christian ministries uh, with what they're doing yeah. so they can up their internet game. Well, so what I mean is I don't want uh, keyboard jihadis imitating exactly. what we're doing because we're doing some pretty high level stuff behind the scenes that. Uh, Oh, you, you just pointed to a comment. It's yeah, Romans, Romans 10 down. 9 was asking if I'm going to be featuring you on the one minute apologist with uh, yes. any videos on Islam. We've done no, some... it, wasn't, it wasn't on Islam. Oh, right? it wasn't on Islam. Okay, I thought it was. No, don't you remember what we talked about? Oh, no, no. Somebody was asking if I was going to have some stuff with you on Islam specifically. And we will be doing that because when we get together, uh, I'll just have Tim bring down our set, and we'll just sit down and get a bunch of videos of David doing that for sure. Yeah, but you you did record some videos with me. Yes, and uh, some of those are going to be coming out. That was a lot of fun. I actually talked to David. My research is on the moral argument from guilt, and I talked to David about uh, you know he doesn't feel guilt, and so one of my questions to him was. How do you uh, recognize guilt if you don't feel guilt? And uh, we had a lot of good time talking about that because I, I talk about David in my research, um, how as somebody who uh, is a, a psychopath and talks about that element that um, you don't feel guilt, but you recognize guilt. You can recognize I've done wrong. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty powerful uh, to think about. So we got some good videos where I kind of get into the mindset of David that I think um, I try to tap into some questions that maybe people don't feel comfortable just coming straight out and asking you that uh, you kind of gave me access and say, go for it. You can ask me whatever. And I really took some time to do that. You did an amazing job on these videos. I hope it'll really be a source of encouragement to your audience as well. Um, yeah, and it's actually, uh, it's, it's, it, I don't know why, but for you know, I've been going around and, and sharing my testimony for a while, and you know, I get questions about, you know, after I shared my testimony, be like, you know, what happened to Randy? What happened to your dad afterwards? Yeah. Be things like that. But now, with increasing frequency, um, I finish up, and there are people afterwards, and they're going, um, "Hey, I think my son's a psychopath. What what what, what do I do?" Mm -hmm. and I'm hearing that all the time. I think my daughter's a, a sociopath or something like that. Um, so getting, getting questions like that. So there are a lot of people concerned out there and, um, 
it, it's funny because the main reason I'm talking about it is because uh, atheists and Muslims kind of made me, right? For years, I would, uh, I would mention that I'm a former atheist. And it was actually John Loftus, the atheist, and, mm-hmm. and a couple Wait, others who, Christian. yeah, who kept uh, who kept um, saying because they they think well, that people, yeah, they think that people who claim they they think that people who claim to be ex atheists are just like trying to score points. So they kept saying they want to know what kind of atheist were you? Were you a serious atheist? So it was actually that. That's why uh, getting those challenges. Tell us, tell us your real story. Tell us how devout of an atheist you were. That's kind of why I made that video, right? That was okay. Mm-hmm. I need to go ahead and make just make a video, and I wanted to do it in creative fashion. Um, I didn't mention being a psychopath in that video, but other people, other people started saying, "Hey, you're a psychopath. You're a psychopath," and um, so. Uh, and, and then Muslims started throwing that around. He's a psychopath. Don't listen to him. He's a psychopath. Yeah. But I don't. I, I, I don't. I mean, it's 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 true, right? I mean, I, I've actually been diagnosed with that. So I don't want people like using it as a weapon. And you kind of can't if I just own it, right? Yeah. <laughs> if I yeah. just if I if I talk about it. But what I found in the process is it's kind of important because um, my background. I grew up and I had these problems. But no one explains it to you, right? You don't know. You don't know what a psychopath is. You just know that you're behaving differently. And so if, if no one discusses that, no one spots you. Yeah. It's easier to spot a sociopath. We talk about this in the videos. You can you can sometimes spot a sociopath because they don't do well at adapting. Yeah. A psychopath actually adapts. They learn to to mimic people's emotional reactions. Even though they're not feeling the emotion, they see other people reacting in a certain way, and they do the same thing. They become actors, right? Mm-hmm. So you, they're harder to spot. Um, but so anyway, so the point is there are people who are growing up who are psychopaths yeah. and are never told anything about that, are never told why they're different, are never told, hey, guys, this is actually a problem that lots of people have, yep. and you need to take steps to deal with it. They're not told that. They're left to kind of figure things out on their own, and there can be some bad bad problems with that because I think around uh, 50% of serial killers are psychopaths who just didn't, they didn't know anything about it. They just, they have no idea why they, you know, want to do some of the things uh, that they do. Well, one of the things that I appreciate about you talking about this is because especially with all the talking about mental health and mental illness, uh, I'm somebody, I mean, uh, that has struggled my entire life with anxiety. Um, in my, I'm 46 now, but when I turned about 40, I sunk into depression. Uh, literally, where I didn't even want to be alive. It was overwhelming. Ended up on antidepressants and counseling, um, and uh, just with my addiction uh, background and, and you know alcoholism uh, recovery in that area, um, you know. I, I want to speak out too. And I think that guys like you and me that know what it's like to struggle with mental illness, but then also know the redemptive uh, plan that the Lord offers us. I think that we need to be able to, the church says everything's a moral issue at times, a lot of the church. I think we're making a lot of progress with mental health. The world's like, oh, it's always a mental health issue. And I just think we need to be a voice on, sometimes there is some mental health stuff going on there. And I appreciate uh, you talking about it because, uh, you know, it, it seems like, that would be hard. Is it hard for you at all to be, to talk about? Like, I think people might be more nervous to bring questions up with you. Okay, the word psychopath has mm-hmm. stigma. Is it hard for you to to talk about it? Um, and it, if if so, why? If not, why? And then why do you think it's hard for people to talk to you uh, in that way? Do you feel like people don't know how to like broach that subject with you necessarily? Um. I don't know. I think people are fine uh, talking about it. Um, no, normally, normally you wouldn't just because it's, it's kind of like a distraction, right? Yeah. You get all these things you want to talk about, mm-hmm. and then there's this side issue that yeah. you kind of don't see the point of talking about, but there are people who want to talk about it, so you kind of talk about it. So it's, it's you know, it kind of feels like a distraction, but yeah, over time I'm just realizing, all right, people do need to talk about this. Absolutely. And it's a uh, it's kind of good that you've had struggles because I watched a couple of your videos years ago, and I was like, who is this? perfect Christian and his oh perfect hair and his, his perfect production, his perfectly produced videos. Can't work with this guy. I mean, can't, who, who can work with this guy, right? 
<laughs> oh man, well, and then, and then hanging out with you, you're all screwed up. Man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you guys have no idea. This dude is messed up. Well, well I could work with that, right? Those, all the Christians I knew for years, yeah. after I became a Christian, were all messed up dudes. So, well, I hate to even think that uh, just a, you know a highly produced video uh, could ever send that message because. Uh, just the whole leadership style I've always had has just been to throw my heart on a table and say to the guy, hey man, in my first year of sobriety, over 400 AA meetings, like, uh, that, I just lay my heart out there. So I, I would never want that to come across. I guess that's a problem with having the one minute apologist, right? You need more time to live stream to say, hey, um, when I served as a pastor, I was Pastor Panic. Uh, I offered up my contribution to world worry on a daily basis. Uh, you know, I know what it's like to struggle with marriage issues. I know what it's like to feel like a big massive failure as a parent. I know what it's like to struggle budgeting. I know what it's like to feel anxious and worried and fearful and depressed and uh, desiring things I shouldn't desire. So yeah, uh, just because I'm a Christian, I don't have it all together. In fact, I got into apologetics, David, uh, because I was into evangelism. And while I was doing evangelism, people were asking me questions I didn't know the answer to. Um, but then I ended up struggling with horrific doubts mm -hmm. and apologetics helped me in that. And so uh, I, in the world of apologetics, uh, I didn't get into it because I was some naturally born academic. I was so uneducated, I failed the ASVAB three times to get in the military because wow, I was such a, a partier. What a loser. What a loser, exactly. See? Um, so, I told you it was a loser. Exactly, right? The, the Losers Club, right? Hey, welcome to the Losers Club with Bobby Conway and David Wood. We're here to help you. Uh, hey, dude, Romans 10.9. I like Romans 10.9. Yeah. Uh, what an encouraging statement. Thank you for sharing that. Those are the kind so, of statements that I love to hear. Let's go ahead and read it real quick. Yeah. Uh, I was born into a Christian family and lost my faith, however, after watching William Lane Craig on your channel. I looked into his stuff uh, and became a Christian again. I found your channel through one of David's playlists. I think it was a playlist... I think it's a playlist at the end of Islamicized Me, where I put playlists on, you know, what is the gospel and the existence of God. I think uh, a couple of your videos were were in there. So, uh, and hey, and that was before I knew you. So that's when I that's when I thought you're a total like, you know, stuck up, super Christian. <laughs> yeah, a super Christian. So I, I must have just thought, wow, this is a really See, well done video. That, so I'm going to use it. That is very judgmental of you, David, because I I never even heard the gospel ties. Yeah. Nineteen. How old were you when you got saved? Uh, Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got me by a year there, bro. There you go. Uh, hey, here we go. Uh, Kenji says, uh, "Yo, David, did you meet John Lovell from Warrior Poet Society?" Yeah, I met him. I've had to teach him a couple lessons over the past few days about who's the real alpha here. Uh, the other day in church, in the church, I could have sworn I seen him. Is he part of your Israel crew, uh, Cosmic Miracle, him being in Israel as well? Uh, no, he's actually part of the, the, the group we're with. And, uh, yep, he's pretty cool. Uh, my discussions with him are usually uh, making fun of him, and then he's making fun of me, and I make fun of his YouTube channel. I keep going like this every time I walk by because he has, like, for those of you who don't know him, the Warrior Poet Society, he, uh, he does, he's, a, he's, a, he's an ex-Army Ranger, so he's, he's special forces, and so he does, like, um, you know, self-defense videos and what to do in these various scenarios. But, you know, he does, he does gun stuff. So he's, you know, he, he, he does gun stuff on his channel. So every time I walk by, I go, <laughs> and, uh, whenever he talks about his videos, I go, look, and anyone can go on there and get some guns and go, <laughs> people are going to watch it, man. That doesn't mean you have a good channel. Uh, <laughs> but it's cool. He, he puts up with it. And, uh, the other thing I talk to him about is I'll put him in all, in all these, uh, scenarios. I'll, uh, I'll come up behind him. Uh, while he's sitting down, and I'll say, all right, and I'll, I'll reach over him like this, and I'll say, suppose I just, you know, put a garret around your neck, and I say, I own you, do exactly what I say. Um, and he'll say, well, I would just have to do what you say. Because I'm thinking, okay, what, what, what self-defense method does he have if someone just came and put a garret around his, around his throat? And all these situations I'm giving him, he's like, nope, I'm dead. I'd be dead. <laughs> and so I'm like, gosh, man. So... Yeah. Well, what would you do if somebody came up and put a gear on you? Well, that's the thing. I kind of didn't know. I, well, I specifically said in a car seat, you get you get yeah. into your car, you get up to the wheel, and someone someone that you didn't see in the back seat puts a gear around your throat and uh, you know says, hey, you better do what I say. Um, I had a couple of th I was like, hey, you don't have some cool thing where you flip your feet back up over your head and <laughs> like mess them up. Um, or, uh, or I suggested, I said, hey, if you slammed your feet, if you if you kicked back hard and made the, the your car seat go back, uh, what about that? 
Um, he, he said that would be basically useless because, you know, it, it's just your seat that's going to hit him. He's still going to have you around the neck. He said if you're driving, that's better because you could always just ram into a yeah. telephone pole. And if he's not buckled in, he'll go flying. Yeah. Uh, but he said basically in that situation, if, if you don't have a gun, you're, you're probably, you're you're probably toast. So that's yeah. how our conversations go. And, you know, uh, I say, what if a guy shows up with a gun? He says, well, then, you, then you're dead. And I go, well, what if I charge him? And he says, you're, you're going to get killed. And I say, yeah, but I mean, 50 Cent got shot like nine times. He took it. I could take like 10, right? <laughs> so he doesn't think I would survive most of my actual uh, uh, theoretical solutions. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually planning on going live. I don't know about the Internet situation. We'll see if it improves at all. Uh, this might be a bad time of day. But if the Internet improves at all, by tomorrow, I was planning on going live with him and with another. So, uh, again, John Lovell's uh, a, an ex-Army Ranger. Also have here, uh, we're with uh, an ex-Navy SEAL. So I wanted to get them commenting on uh, the death of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Yeah, Chad, Chad Williams, uh, Seal of God. His book has uh, sold over 100,000 copies. It was fun. I was just with him <clears throat> on the roof uh, before I came down to your room. And uh, we were just talking to him about his training, and he was sharing about Hell Week and how uh, miserable it was. He got four hours of sleep in one week, and uh, and he was just freezing the entire week. He had 173 people uh, in his class, and only 13 uh, finished. And he's been interesting for me to watch on this trip because anytime we get out of the bus, he's just doing his reconnaissance. You know, you can just see him thinking through his scenarios. Uh, sharp, sharp dude. I'm looking forward to. He he lives in Huntington Beach, so about 20 minutes from where I live in South Orange County, and so I'm just really looking forward to uh, connect more with him as well. So mm-hmm. you're gonna have him on tomorrow? In theory, well, I'm gonna I'll run some speed tests on the internet if it look if it's looking better because when we when we got to the hotel, it, yeah. was, it was running it was running stronger than it is now. Okay, um, yeah. so it might just be better during the day when people are like out and stuff rather than at night when they're back and they're 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 on their laptops and stuff. Um, all right. Here's a question about methodology. I get your perspective on this because you're like super nice guy on video. But I'm a jerk. Jer- yeah, when it's just hanging out, you're 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 a total jerk, <laughs> like me. <laughs> Are you saying I'm a hypocrite? The two <laughs> faces of Bobby Conway. Uh, uh, well, a little. If little, they want to watch uh, the many faces of David, the Joker face. Yeah. Uh, the- <laughs> I mean, that actually the, the t- that actually face. that actually ties okay, in perfectly okay, with, with this question. By the way, Nabil, Nabil, little known fact, Nabil was the same way. If Nabil was talking to me, he his his level of of jerkness was at least on par with mine, and often far surpassing mine. Like saying things to me that I would never say to someone else, right? Uh, but but you know, as far as like when he's when he's talking to a crowd or something, uh, very nice. Whereas I'm just I'm just a, I'm just a jerk all the time. Yes, yeah, and you know what? That's really been true. I've felt uh, your jerkitude uh, attitude. I try. You know, thank you. Yes. So uh, uh, so anyway, this is a, a good question about methodology. Yeah. Uh, it says David, would you consider your way of showing Muslims that they have a false prophet is the best? I have had uh, an argument with my father with the whole gentleness and respect part of First Peter 3.15. And there's an if, which leads me to believe that there is a part two. Um, I'll go ahead and respond to this and uh, be interested in getting Bobby's uh, res- uh, views here as well. A um, couple things here. Um, would I consider my way of showing Muslims that they have a false prophet the best? Um, no. It's just something that no one's doing, right? So if you have 10 ways of doing things and people are doing them nine ways and there's this other way of doing things and no one's doing it, then I think someone needs to doing it, needs to be doing that, even if it's not the best. So that's one. The other thing is, I would say it's the best with certain Muslims. Right? We don't want to forget this: that there are different kinds of people, and that's why we need different kinds of approaches. Right? There are different kinds of people in the world, um, guys. There are uh, how many Muslims? I mean, go through go through my videos and look for uh, testimonies of ex-Muslims. Go go to the leading Islam series. Look at how many Muslims, ex-Muslims were thanking me for just blasting away at their prophet. There are Muslims out there, if you sit there and give a, a calm response to uh, their claims that Muhammad is a prophet, are not going to listen to you. But if you start just saying, Muhammad is the most obvious false prophet in history, 
this guy had sex with a nine-year-old girl. He took the wife of his own adopted son, and you make fun of him. Suddenly, they can't stay away. There are, it's just a fact that there are people like that. There are just lots of Muslims out there who only listen if you are uh, coming at their prophet very aggressively. That's when they can't stop listening. So that, that might be, my approach might be horrible for a Muslim who's, who's not like that, for a Muslim who is, you know, j just wants a nice, uh, peaceful discussion. But guess what? I wouldn't use that approach with a Muslim like that, right? It depends. It, de it depends on, on the person. Um, as far as First Peter three fifteen, um, I think this ver I think this passage is, is massively misused. If if we were to interpret First Peter three fifteen the way people are using it, the way Christians are using it to mean, hey, you should always say everything in gentleness and respect, then guess what? Who in the New Testament, who in the Bible doesn't fail that test? Jesus fails that test. If that's if that's if that's your criteria, hey, you always need to say everything with gentleness and respect. What do you do with Jesus saying, "Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you whitewashed tombs, you brood of vipers, you serpents"? What do you do with that? Right? That's not gentleness and it's not respect. He's showing contempt for them, mm -hmm. and he's heaping abuse on them. So did the Apostle Paul in certain situations. And here's what's here's what's here's what's interesting. When you see people like Jesus, or you go to the Old Testament, people like Elijah, uh, people like Jesus, when do they use ridicule and mockery? They generally use it with religious leaders who are leading other people astray. Mm -hmm. When do I use it? With Muhammad, the ultimate religious leader who is leading people astray. Mm -hmm. So I believe I'm, I'm kind of following the Bible mm -hmm. on this one. If you look at what 1 Peter 3.15 actually says, it doesn't say, hey... Even if you're addressing a false ideology and a false prophet who's leading people astray, always say everything with gentleness and respect. It's not what it says. Mm -hmm. It says someone comes to you and asks you for a reason for the hope that you have. And if you look at the, at the context, it's actually people asking you this in a context of you being persecuted and things like that, right? But it's in the context of someone coming and saying, hey, I want to know why you have this hope. Now, in my videos, if someone says, hey, David, I want to know why you have this hope in Jesus Christ. Do, do, what, do I mock them? No. Mock a false prophet. Why? Because that is the biblical pattern, right? So I think I am following the uh, the Bible here. With that said, there are all kinds of Muslims out there. There are all kinds of people out there. So different, uh, different approaches. Um, I don't think most Christians should respond the way I do. I think someone needs to respond the way I do. Hmm. And so if someone needs to do it, it might as well be me because I'm built for this. All right. Any thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on that, by the way? Because you're 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 Mister uh, Mister Goody Two Shoes. Oh, let me give you my nice little answer, baby, to Bobby, right? <laughs> you see, I'm mocking what I. Anyway. <laughs> um, no, I I think that there's this. Uh, uh, you know, Paul says, "I become all things to all people, so that I might win some." And I think that we do have to understand who we're talking to. I think that was a great answer. It tends to be with the religious people or with self righteous people. Um, if you're dealing with um, a fundamentalist like new atheists. Um, depending upon a particular Muslim and their stance towards things, um, uh, you might have to be strong with people. Uh, I mean, yeah, we want to be gentle. We want to be kind. We want to be respectful. We want to be loving. We're not looking to make enemies. We want to build friendship and connections and have allies uh, for sure. Um, and that's what I would always want to be my approach. But sometimes um, that meekness is perceived as weakness. And I think that uh, I haven't personally had uh, the opportunity to come across a lot of Muslims in my life. Um, I love Muslims. I would definitely want to uh, present a, a, a case for Christianity. But if I felt like someone was coming strong at me, um, even in a debate situation, um, you know, it, People, there are some people in a debate situation, they walk all over you if you're too soft. So you have to kind of match strength with strength. Um, and it's just part of, you know, building out that respect that you're trying to get. And I think you can get away with things that other people can't, um, for sure. And I do think that it's harder for more of your golden retriever personality to kind of be a Doberman pincher. Um, for me, uh, I, I, I definitely, um, would prefer the gentle side, but can be strong if I have to. Uh, and I, so I think it is it absolutely, as you said, just becoming all things to all people. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, 
that's what you find in the Bible, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I heard, uh, I think it was uh, his name, John Eldridge. He asked years ago, he said, uh, mm-hmm. who is Jesus more like, Mother Teresa or William Wallace? William Wallace from, from Braveheart. And he said, you know, lots of lots of people in America would say, oh, he's more like Mother Teresa, you know, caring for the boy. He said, no, it's it depends on who you are, right? It, it, it depends on who you are, which is going to determine how he was coming at you. If you were um, a, a, a prideful uh, religious leader or something like that who's oppressing other people, Jesus was coming to pick a fight with you, right? Not a physical fight. He's coming to pick a fight, right? He's, he's coming. To, he's coming to start an argument. Uh, he's going to. He's going to put you in your place. Um, if you were a, a social outcast, a leper, or something like that, he came. He came to you with 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 nothing but love. So. Uh, yep, different different situations, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> here's a funny one. Uh, Benny says, uh, "Brother David, what happened between you and Sam?" Uh, Benny, if you don't understand sarcasm and joking, then probably not best to follow uh, my arguments with Sam. So I would go on to Sam's live stream, which I did a little while ago, and I said, "Hey, uh, if you don't want to be bored out of your mind, then leave Sam's live stream and come watch ours." And then Sam started talking trash about our live stream, telling people not to watch it. We're just going to put everyone to sleep. So if you don't understand joking, then don't don't don't, don't pay any attention to that stuff because we're joking. We're that that that's how we uh, that's how we come at each other. Um, and if you yeah if you if you're if you're not familiar with that, you're going to have a problem understanding like half of everything I say during my daily life because I'm usually messing with somebody. All right. Well, uh, it's 11:46. I'm glad that this is working. I'm glad. Absolutely. I'm glad this internet is working a little better now that we've uh, we've uh, gone with a lower resolution. Um, oh, uh, look where we are! I'm scrolling through the comments. Yeah, these are all the comments that have been posted. We're we're up in like the first. We're still up in the first quarter. All right, guys. Since we don't have. Oh hey, uh, Brian of London is in Tel Aviv. Well, that's cool. I remember getting a message. Here's the thing, guys. I've gotten like. Probably 30 messages from people want to uh, see me in Israel, but up until like today, our schedule has just been jam packed, right? It's jam packed. Like even when it says, "Oh, you have this time to go off and have dinner yourself" or something like that, it's usually a, a pretty short time because our days are just packed. Oh, and yeah. then, and then uh, mine was even worse because I've been uploading videos, so we get back to the hotel and every you know people go to sleep, and you know I have to start downloading, you know, uh, putting footage on my laptop, and then. Um, editing and then posting the video and stuff. So I've been getting like four hours sleep a night. Um, but uh, I've gotten a ton of a ton of messages from people who uh, wanted to try and see us while we're while we're in Israel. Um, Brian of London, if he's actually in the same area with us, um, tell uh, tell Brian to go ahead and send me a message. I remember getting one from him probably I don't know three or four days ago or something like that. Uh, but I was getting a bunch of them. But yeah, tell him to send me another message because we're we're leaving tomorrow evening. So tomorrow would be the last. Last opportunity. Um, here's one. David, what did the Muslim following you at the mosque want? That's actually condensed because I recorded a ton of footage and then have to, you know, condense the uh, some parts. But uh, there, were, there, it was actually two. It was actually two. There's, there's one when I was walking around. Um, there's the guy, and you can hear him. He says, uh, "Are you a Muslim?" And I said, "No." And he says, "You're not a Muslim." And you know, just to try and de-escalate, I, I turned off my camera at that point. But he got on a walkie-talkie. He's, he's security. He got on a walkie-talkie and he started, uh, he started yelling a bunch of stuff into the walkie-talkie. So I turned around and walked away. Then I walked around, uh, you know, walked around for a little while. Then when I came back up, when I came back up, that's when I came back to get a, a picture of that, of the sort of demon head. And as I was walking up there, I noticed a guy following me, but he's following me like probably 50 feet away. But wherever I would go, he's following me. And he's got a walkie-talkie in his hand. So right when I walked up and I took, uh, I took the picture of, the, uh, of, uh, of that demon-looking head and stuff, uh, then I, turned, you know, I sort of used my peripheral vision, and he took off running at me, right? So he came running, and he's got a, I hear the walkie-talkie going, and I hear him coming up. And so... Uh, I basically turned towards the Mount of Olives, and as soon as I turned away, he stopped coming at me, right? As soon as I wasn't recording the Dome of the Rock, he stopped running at me. Uh, and then as I'm walking around the Dome of the Rock, he stays like probably six or seven feet behind me, and he always circles behind me. So whatever direction I'm facing, I'm pretending I don't right, I don't notice him, right? But whatever direction I, I'm facing, uh, he, he circles behind me. So the situation is not, I'm not, look, I'm not scared of getting my head kicked in. I'm not scared of any of that. 
Uh, I don't want to lose the footage, right? I don't want. To, I don't want someone. I, I'm about for don't. You know, he's kind of crazy in this way. I'm scared of that. You know what? 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 Why aren't you scared of that? I don't know. I'm just wired that way. I mean, it's, it, it, it kind of be. <laughs> you know, in my mind, I'm like, it'd be kind of be funny, right? <laughs> Say, hey, I walked up on the Temple Mount. I mean, I took. I mean, I, I took some. I take some video of the Dome of the Rock and got my head kicked in. Right? It'd be a funny story. Um, but at the at the at the end of at the end of the day, I don't want to lose the footage, right? I was on the Temple Mount to get video footage to show people what's up there, and uh, just don't want someone taking the cell phone or making me erase it or saying you're not allowed to do that. I was happy that I'd gotten the footage that I got it, so I wanted to make sure I got off the the Temple Mount with that footage. Um, all right, so guys, we only have a couple minutes left. Uh, we're we're only I've only scrolled through like a quarter of the comments, so I'm going to go ahead and skip to the most recent ones. Uh, just so we can get a couple recent ones before. Uh, wait, oh, <laughs> people are <laughs> people are sitting here giving loving messages. Uh, is this must be a you stupid idiot? I think that I think this is a joke. Hazrat Muhammad. I think this is a you joke might account. Ask clarify. <laughs> um. All right. Just pick any comment you want to respond to because we only have a few left, a few minutes left. Um, so yeah, guys, we're gonna cut. It's a uh, it's eleven fifty one here right now, so it's almost midnight, and we have to. What is this? Here we go. John David, David Wood, you and your family have a cancer. Soon you are skeleton uh, crossbones coffin. Room, room, boom. Soon hell from room. Fire, fire, fire. Soon you are on hell like Nabil Qureshi, huh? Boom, boom, room. Wow. So, you see, Boy, that's sound, sound like a love there. Sound like a poet, man. Yeah. <laughs> you could have been the world's greatest poet with a, your, your awesome use of words. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, 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 are, dying, what are all these? I can't tell if this is a joke. Hope you die in Israel, inshallah. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's a joke account, right? Uh, yeah. With the Muhammad. All right, here we go. This is talk. I haven't even read this entire comment, um, but it's asking about an approach. So, Bobby. Could you recommend an approach for an atheist who has indicated that he has rejected all Abrahamic religions and that he does not need an angry and jealous God? Wow. Um, Ezri, uh, that's a big question. Can you recommend an approach for an atheist who's indicated that he's rejected all Abrahamic religions? Um, one of the things that, <clears throat> that I think can be helpful uh, when talking to an atheist, even before getting to Christianity, is talking uh, through arguments for the existence of God uh, and why philosophically we might believe in the cosmological or the teleological argument. I think the moral argument can be good and we can detect something about the nature of God. So for example, even in my moral argument from guilt, I talk about how our guilt can indicate something about the nature of God. For example, uh, that God would be good, personal, all-knowing, um, a moral lawgiver and fit to judge. And by that, uh, what I mean is when we uh, feel guilt, uh, we feel like we've offended someone, not like we've offended some abstract, ethereal, free-floating object like in Platonic thought. Uh, so I, what I feel like uh, is when we sense guilt, it seems as if we've offended someone, uh, like someone's been watching us. So God is personal. Uh, when we feel guilty and sense guilt, uh, it's God pinging us, letting us know something about his nature, that we've acted contrary to it. God is a good God. And so if we feel guilty for lying, it's because God cares about truth. Uh, when we sense guilt, it's because we've broken a moral law. Hence, God is a moral law giver. Um, God is fit to judge. If uh, God is the one who's given the, the law, if he has given us guilt as a resource for understanding it, uh, then these are types of uh, things that we can get into discussions with atheists uh, where we say, hey, look, you experience guilt, I experience guilt. Uh, what offers the best explanation for it? Uh, how do you ground uh, this moral law? 
otherwise, we just have subjectivism, moral relativism. So I think it's good to be able to get in discussions uh, with an atheist. And if we can ground morality in the good nature of God, then we get the theism. And then at theism, uh, then we can talk about the different options uh, of the theistic options for uh, dealing with our guilt, what best resolves it. And that's where I think Christianity begins to walk. Uh, in the atonement, Jesus absolves our guilt and uh offers us a remedy through trust and faith in him. And so I think that it's not always a clean sweep from atheism directly to these Abrahamic uh, traditional beliefs, uh, in particular Christianity. Sometimes we need to do a little bit of philosophical work and then all along praying for the Holy Spirit to soften their hearts so that they might have their eyes enlightened. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I would probably want to do some groundwork trying to understand uh, where this person's at, because uh, lots of, not just atheists, but it, it, it could be Christians, it could be Muslims, it could be anyone, um, they sort of absorb a claim or absorb a popular saying without really thinking about it, you know, without, w without understanding the reasons. So they'll just say, I reject Abrahamic religions. I reject Abrahamic religions. Um, and you know, they'll just, they'll just say that. And so you might want to do some groundwork. You know, what do you, what do you mean by that? And why, why do you reject them? Yeah. And what if one were true? What if, what if an Abrahamic religion were true? Would you, would you want to believe in it if it's true? Or are you just saying you wouldn't believe in it because you know, you, they're not true, but if one were true, then you would want to know. Um, and I would, I would, if someone grants and here, here's what I want to say. If someone says, look, if an Abrahamic religion were true, I would still not want to believe in it. I don't know what you can do about after that point, except pray for the person, right? Because uh, that person would be saying, even if it's true, I don't want to know. I, that, that's the one situation I've never figured out what to do with. The, and, and maybe it's because there's nothing to do there if a person is acknowledging that he doesn't care about the truth. So, um, yeah, but hopefully the person doesn't say that. Hopefully a person says, no, if, if one were true, I would want to know it. And then he could say, all right, well... Let me tell you why I think this is true. And I would focus on building a good case for the, for the resurrection. Uh, in, in addition to, you know, uh, classic apologetics arguments, Kalam, you know, Kalam cosmological argument, design argument, both the design in the universe and design, uh, you know, in, in biology, um, moral argument, things like that. Because the, the idea is, uh, it's, it's, there's, there's a, a kind of cumulative case there, right? It's pretty much everything. It's pretty much everything, wherever you go. There's information everywhere, right? There's information in the entire, in the fundamental laws of the universe. There's information in every one of your cells. There's information everywhere. The, the moral law is information. That's not what you would expect from a, a, a mindless universe, right? You wouldn't expect information to be everywhere, to be at the bottom of everything. Uh, if God exists, that's exactly what you'd expect. And so... Um, yeah, so that, that, those would be a couple ideas. All right. Uh, what are we, we're at? A, we're, no, we're at eleven fifty-eight. All right, guys, we have to uh, we have to cut off because again, it's uh, it's midnight here. Uh, assuming the internet is doing uh, at least as well it is as it is now tomorrow, we I will try to go live with a couple of special forces guys to talk about. Uh, the death of al-Baghdadi before before we uh, fly back to the United States. Um, all right, Bobby, you've got about a minute. What a coinky dick. Uh, <laughs> final thoughts for everyone here. Well, uh, good to be on the program with you. Uh, if you're not familiar with our channel, uh, check it out at YouTube, The One Minute Apologist. We've got over a thousand videos. You can also go to OneMinuteApologist.com and check out our stuff. Uh, and uh, just thank you for listening to us. I uh, hope to be able to uh, meet with some of you guys in the future. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go to bed. It's late here and crash out. So peace out. Actually, one of us is going to bed. I have a video to edit. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Again, so I'm going to go uh, edit this video. I'll have it up in a little while. And uh, for those of you who aren't subscribed to Bobby's channel, the link is in the description box. So you want to subscribe to that. He'll have... Uh, some videos with me up here pretty soon, uh, so you wanna you wanna see those. Uh, but also uh, scroll through his videos. He's, he, he's, again, he, he just mentioned he has over a thousand videos. Basically, there are subjects in there that are relevant to everyone. So there there will also be topics in there you're not interested in. So scroll through those, 
and uh, find the stuff you're interested in, and he'll give you some uh, concise responses. All right. Uh, hopefully, see everyone tomorrow. If not, I plan on live starting a live starting up live streams again uh, once I'm back in the U.S. So, see you soon.